Hey everyone, what's going on? It's your boy Krebsy Crypto, and for today's video, we'll be taking a look at this article that talks about a solo Bitcoin miner solves a block with hash rate of just 10 terahashes a second, beating extremely unlikely odds. And this just goes to show that Bitcoin is all about probability and odds, and there is a small chance even with small hash rate, you can still get the block and still earn a reward. And this just goes to show that it's not like always favored just to a big group of miners. Sometimes Sometimes you can just have something small and you could still come out with a high profit or a high gain or something of the sort. Even though it is very unlikely, it could still happen every once in a while. I just found this very interesting, so I figured we'd go over it quickly so we can look at like the in-depth numbers of this to see how much it's broken down and how much of a chance you would actually have with 10 terahashes a second on the Bitcoin network. So even though big pools have become the dominant winners in Bitcoin mining, solo miners are occasional reminders of Bitcoin's probabilistic design. And that, like I was saying, it's just all about probability and odds. You never know, there is a slight chance you could still come out with something like a reward or a block in this case. A solo Bitcoin miner with an average hashing power of just 10 terahashes a second won the race to add block 772,793 to the Bitcoin block blockchain on Friday. At the time of the block was added, Bitcoin's total hash rate was just over 269 exahash per second, meaning the solo miners 10 terahashes a second represented just 0.0000000037% of the blockchain's entire computable computer national power so it made up a very small fragment of the actual uh blockchains like mining power so as i said like that number the 0.0037 percent as you see in the article if you are reading or if you're just listening along that is a very small percentage and he came out on top getting the solo block and getting the 6.25 block reward so he came out very profitable but we'll be breaking it down more just more in this article here so let's keep on reading it's just amazing to to me that like even though out of all these years and how big the block uh bitcoin blockchain actually is and how much computing power is on there that this little miner still came out with a huge reward and came out on top even though it could only happen once in his lifetime you still are set because you got six bitcoin so you can just hang on to that or either sell it right away either way you have a good chunk of money for yourself right there so to put it simply it was an extremely unlikely win for an individual miner as i was explaining but here's the tweet here this is a ck pool dev where the person was mining congratulations to miner and then there's their address with only 10 terahashes who solved the solo block at solo.ckpool.org and you could check out the explorer link there so if you want you can check out this tweet i'll post it down in the description so you can go and check out the actual block itself and see that it was only uh solved with 10 terahashes a second so despite the odds stacked against them, the solo miner was the first to produce a valid hash for the block to be mined. In return, the miner received 98% of the total of the 6.35939231 BTC alluded to or alluded for the block reward and fees. The remaining 2% went to the solo CK pool, an online mining service that facilitates individual mining. So obviously there's always going to be a pool reward, especially when it comes to solo mining, because you are using their pool and network to connect to the actual blockchain. So they're taking a small percentage, which is totally acceptable. At least it's not like something like 10%. It's a small fee, like 2%. So you're still walking away with a good chunk of Bitcoin either way. And that's just crazy to me that like, it still baffles me that someone, you know, with such a small computing power can go ahead and just win this reward. It makes me want to fire up my Ant Miner Z9 Mini and just mine on the, uh, I believe it's Equihash or Zhash or Zcash network. I forget which one it is. Don't quote me on it. I haven't used it in a while. But I just want to solo mine on there and keep it running and see if I can hit off a block and make a couple hundred bucks. And we'll just finish up this article by talking about what were the odds. There's more to this article and I suggest if you want to go and read it yourself. There's more information in this article. I'm just kind of bringing out the main Bolton points about this article. So if you want to check it out, the link will be in the description so you can go ahead and fully read the article. But what were the odds of this happening? The chances of adding a block as a solo miner are determined by the number of hashes the mining rig is computing per second in relation to the total number of hashes that all the machines on the network are computing each second. So like I said, it's kind of a competition in a sense. So your mining rig 
computing power is going against all the other ones. So depending how much is on the actual network is what your rig is competing against. According to a post from the user Willie9974 on the Bitcoin talk forums, less than an hour after block 772,793 was solved, the lucky solo miner had an average hash rate over the previous hour of 10.6 terahashes a second. The information posted on Bitcoin Talk also revealed that the 10 terahashes a second was the combined power of four machines called workers, as we know. This suggests that the solo mining rig was likely made up of four USB stick Bitcoin miners, which can individually uh, achieve a hash rate of around three terahashes a second and cost roughly around $200 each. And I believe that would be American price, so it would just be even more in like Canada and other countries of the sort. So that's crazy to think that we're assuming that it is made up of four USB sticks because it was four machines and each one does three terahashes so therefore it would come out to the 10 terahashes and still even if you're paying 200 each and you have what was it four of them two four six that'd be like 800 bucks and you came out with like five or six bitcoin you would be making a profit and you're laughing about it no matter how long you've had it running because the usb stick miners don't take up as much power so it's a lot easier to run for most people and it's kind of just a, like a it's kind of like a lottery ticket you buy these miners and just leave them running and they can pull off something like this and they can really pay off just like if you buy lottery tickets or scratch tickets you can go ahead and do them and it can really pay off in the long run it's small probability and small odds i don't recommend doing it myself but if you do have extra machines or an extra equipment laying around and if you have extra cash or something laying around and you feel like you know your odds are in your favor or something go ahead and buy some of these and just do it for the fun of it but don't go out of your way and actually you know spend money that you have set aside for other things to go and buy this is not something i'm recommend go and doing i just wanted to go over this because it's crazy to think that even with just small like uh, equipment or small workers you could still achieve something that most people would say is impossible but like I said, it is one in a million chance. We've seen this in the past few months, though. There's also another miner who uh, got Bitcoin by using a small amount of power. So it's just luck of the draw and the luck of the probability. You can use a small rig, but if you're doing more uh, shares a second and accepting more and your speed is faster, then you have a higher chance of grabbing that block because you are completing it first because you are completing it faster. And before we end it here, I was reading and like there was a few articles about this one. This one was just the best one to go ahead and do a video on, but there were other articles about the solo miner uh, for Bitcoin solving this block. And another one said that this would on average take about like this would happen one in every 500 years. So it's very far and few chance that just puts in perspective how low of a probability this was expected to happen. But just to show that like these networks and things, yeah, if you do have like the pools and things dominate, but you just never know if you have that faster network connection, if you're running it and something just clicks faster or one of those big rigs get turned off and then you, if you are next in line to accept shares and stuff like there's a lot of probability and chances that go into this. So like I said, I'm not recommending going out and solo mining. Just if you do have the extra equipment or extra money, go ahead and, you know, run up this lottery, try to, you know, get that chance by you usb miner or run up fire up some old equipment that you do have like i said i might fire up my amp miner z9 mini and just mine on the equihash algorithm as a solo miner because i bring a bow i believe it's 10 i forget what it is how how much my uh Ant Miner Z9 Mini does, but either way, it's small probability that I hit a block, but if I do, I come out with a couple hundred bucks, and it's not costing me a lot to run it in the first place. But yeah, I just wanted to go over this with you guys, like I said, to show you guys what the chances are, the probability, to give you guys some hope that, like, not everything, you know, is rigged to one way or anything of the sort. Bitcoin and all these other coins, it's just all probability and chance game. That's all I got for you guys today. If you did enjoy this video or news article, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button as well as me know you guys do enjoy this content. But I hope you all have an amazing day. And this is Krebsy Crypto signing out.